Instacart filing to go public on the NASDAQ. The grocery delivery company will list its shares under the ticker CART. That marks the first significant venture-backed tech IPO since December 2021. Joining us now is Founders Fund general partner Keith Raboy. He's led investments in names like DoorDash and Affirm, currently serves as the CEO of Open Store. Keith, it's been a while. Good to see you. So um, first, let's just talk about Instacart. Uh, how do you think it avoids being seen as the lift to DoorDash's Uber, or is that maybe okay? Maybe okay. I mean, Lyft's done pretty well. It's a public company, you know, worth $3 billion. I invested probably when it was worth $4 million. So, you know, depends what your expectations are. Um, so is this the beginning of something uh, markets-wise with Instacart, or is this just a unique Instacart situation where despite the fact that it's going to have to take a massive haircut, it sort of needs to come public, and so it's doing that? Well, I think there's a lot of great opportunities for public companies in the technology sector, and some of them will be opportunistic and go fast, and some will go slow. Uh, but fundamentally, I think being a public company early is a great thing. So we have several companies in our portfolio that could be public whenever they want. Reality, SpaceX, Stripe, Fair, Ramp, all these are wonderful pri private companies that will be phenomenal public companies. I was talking to Ariel Cohen over at Navan a few weeks ago, and he was saying, hey, not yet, uh, SaaS companies aren't getting the valuation in the market yet that they deserve. So he was still very much on the sidelines. Is that what you're hearing too? No, that's kind of ridiculous. If you look at the current multiples, they're over 40, 50 years. They're actually right in the middle of the bell curve, like 50th percentile over 50 years. So sure, they're not going to get the multiples they got three years ago, but those were artificial fake sort of based on steroids. So reality is technology companies are worth a certain amount and there's a multiple that's appropriate. And over 50 years, right now, you're right down the middle, maybe even slightly above the beat. All right. Well, let's talk about the macro environment and its impact on these companies. I mean, there's been a shift in credit availability. Uh, what's been the impact on especially consumer-facing tech companies? Well, I, we haven't really seen it. You know, you maybe saw, obviously, a firm, I'm still on the board of a firm, reported our earnings, I believe, yesterday. And, you know, people noticed the firm's really dominating. Uh, so, you know, the stock obviously, you know, it's rebounded uh, considerably based upon the performance. So we really don't see the effect of uh, consumer uh, delinquencies or, you know, bankruptcies or anything like that, that you know, people predict, pre have been predicting for two years. Well, but isn't part of the reason, in my view at least, why a firm got that boost is there's been this line out there about buy now, pay later, that, oh, my goodness, they're extra risky, when actually it seemed from a firm's results that, you know, delinquencies were actually down, whereas with some traditional credit players, credit card players, you're seeing them go up. So maybe the math is actually mathing. Maybe the algorithms are working the way that Max said they would. Yeah, no, exactly. A firm has an underwriting advantage. We've been articulating that for nine plus years, and it's true. Um, there are weaker competitors. You know, some of them were fortunate and they sold, you know, to block. Some of them still compete with us, but they don't really know what they're doing. Uh, we do it at a firm, and the world's going to recognize that the more stressors in the economy, the more a firm can shine.